Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's December daily Q&A session. I'm Rachel Neighbors, and you are here for the Neighbors Group and Solo401k.com Q&A. We host these Q&A sessions every day in December to make sure that your last minute questions are answered so you can powerfully move forward in opening up and using your Solo 401k. Today is Thursday, December 24th. We've got our Mr. Christmas tree to be festive here and welcome to today's Q&A. Um, as we're getting started, I know that there's several of you on. Just let me know, can you see me and can you hear me okay? I know we had something funky happening with the mics yesterday. Just let me know, yes, I can see you and yes, I can hear you. Great, awesome. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into the pre submitted questions. Our first question comes from Aziz. Aziz says, Me and my wife are partners and have our solo 401ks. Right now, we are the only two employees of the company. If I hire someone on a contract 1099 basis, is that okay? Will I still maintain my solo 401k status? This is a great question, Aziz. I'm really glad that you brought this up. So the short answer is yes. If you have your small business and your business only has um, you and your spouse as W-2 employees and everybody else works on 1099 contractors, then that's totally fine. That business qualifies for the solo 401k. The only thing that disqualifies you from keeping your solo 401k is if you bring on full-time W-2 employees other than the owners. A solo 401k is an owner-only plan. You're able to have a solo 401k because you are an owner employee. Mr. Christmas was getting in the way a little bit there. You're an owner employee. You own the business and you receive employee compensation from your business. And this allows you to have a solo 401k plan and put a bunch of money in there. If you had other employees, it would no longer be a solo 401k. It would need to be a safe harbor 401k or just a corporate 401k plan with non-discrimination testing, eligibility testing, highly compensated employee testing, and a lot more bureaucratic and administrative work. Because your business just has you and your wife as employees, Aziz, you can have the solo 401k. If you bring on part-time employees under a thousand hours per year that they're working, or you use independent contractors, that's just fine. That does not affect your qualification for your solo 401k. Great question, Aziz. All right, our next question comes from Eugene. Eugene asks, if my books for the sole proprietorship are not finalized by the end of the year, and I don't know my true P&L, how can we determine the maximum amount a contribution amount for the 401k plan by December 31st? Or do we have more time for the sole proprietorships? S-Corp payroll has to be run by the end of the year with payroll contributions included, correct? Great questions, Eugene. So you are right that your S-Corp payroll does need to be run by the end of the year, and you will want to include your um, 401k contributions in that payroll. It's a good idea to do that. Um, but you know, even for S Corp, sometimes the books are not closed by the 31st. This is really a question for you and your accountant or your CPA if they run the final payroll, but then they are closing the books on January 1st. Each book, each business is a little bit different. For sole proprietorships, there's many of us who are still receiving payments right up until the 31st. So our books might not close until after the first. When you're formally electing contributions for your 401k plan, make a best estimate to what you believe your contribution amount will be, 
and complete that contribution form and store it in your records. As the plan administrator, if you need to change the numbers on your contribution form, that's that's okay. This is a best estimate of your formal election. And once the books are closed, if those numbers need to be tightened up a little bit before you make your contribution, that's okay. Great question, Eugene, thank you. Our next question comes from Sylvia. Sylvia asks, I have a SEP IRA at Wells Fargo. Do I need to move it from there or can I leave it there? Ultimately, I'd like to use it to invest in a new home. Do I need to open the, a new business trust bank account for this or can I leave it in my Wells Fargo brokerage account? Great question, Sylvia. And I'm really glad that you brought this up because we often have people ask us, um, hey, what do I do with my SEP IRA after I set up a solo 401k? Now, Sylvia, your SEP IRA and your 401k are two distinct retirement plans. They are not the same, so they're not interchangeable. If you have funds in your SEP IRA right now, especially if it's at, uh, at Wells, my guess is it's more of a traditional structure and only going to allow you to invest in traditional assets. Um, I'm guessing that your Wells Fargo S uh, SEP IRA is not going to let you invest in rental property, for example. In order to accomplish that, you will want to roll over your SEP IRA into your solo 401k. And yes, Sylvia, to address your next question, your 401k is going to have its own bank account or its own brokerage account. So you will need to establish a new depository account or investment account for your 401k funds. The reason for that is we are going to get a tax ID number from the IRS for your 401k plan. You'll use that tax ID number to open a bank account or a brokerage account or both for your 401k funds. That's the entity that you're going to be investing from. So what I think makes the most sense for you, Sylvia, and I know we just set up your plan documents yesterday after the IRS had already closed for the year. So what makes the most sense for right now is to formally elect your contribution. That's just completing that contribution form and storing it in your records. And then after January, we'll get, or you know, in the first week of January, we'll get the new tax ID number for your 401k trust. Then you can open a bank account for your 401k, roll over your SEP IRA funds into your solo 401k, and you'll be ready to close on the property. So just to recap, your current SEP IRA is probably not set up to invest in alternative assets. Therefore, if you wanna use those funds, you need to roll over your SEP IRA into your new solo 401k. Because your solo 401k is a separate entity, a separate retirement plan, it's going to have its own tax ID number and its own bank account. Great question, Sylvia. Really glad you brought that up. We're excited for you to close on this first deal. Okay, our next question comes from Anand. Anand asks, question on the Roth IRA LLC. If we set one up, do we need to additionally pay the $800 LLC fees in California? Seems like it will cost a thousand to set up and also 800 a year just to maintain the Wyoming LLC. This is a great question, Anand. Um, California is tough when it comes to almost everything, but specifically taxes. It's a beautiful state, not great when it comes to tax treatment. Um, CPAs have differing opinions on this. When the neighbors group team establishes your Roth IRA LLC, or perhaps just a regular IRA LLC, we form your special purpose LLC in the state of Wyoming. We do that for a few reasons. Wyoming invented the LLC structure. They have very reasonable setup and ongoing fees. They provide very strong charging order protection where they don't break the corporate veil, pierce the corporate veil, generally speaking, in lawsuits. They have nice member protection. And there's some anonymity, some privacy on the Wyoming Secretary of State website. They do not list the member 
or manager of the LLC by name. A lot of states do. So for those reasons, our attorneys have recommended that we form the special purpose LLC for the IRA LLC structure in Wyoming. Now, sometimes if you live in a state like California, California wants to try to tax everything that you do. And we've consulted with various CPAs on this and there are two opinions. One batch of CPAs says, unfortunately, if you live in California, if you have any kind of a presence in California, California is gonna to try to charge you that $800 a year franchise LLC tax. Unfortunately, there's just no way around it. Another school of CPAs thinks that if you are following very strict rules, there is a possibility that the franchise tax for LLCs in California is not applicable. What this group of CPAs says is, if you do not have a bank account in California, you have no business activity and no business presence with this LLC in California. In other words, you are not conducting any business in the state of California. It may be arguable that that LLC franchise tax does not apply. But those are very specific to your individual situation, Anand. So you'll want to work closely with your uh, accountant or CPA. What some clients have done is, let's say you live in California, you have a Roth IRA LLC with a Wyoming LLC. That LLC has a bank account in Colorado and owns properties in Texas. It may be possible to argue that there's no presence of business activity in California. There's no bank account, there's no investment activity being done in the state of California. It may be possible to argue in that specific instance, the franchise LLC tax is not applicable. However, this is a determination you must make with your accountant or your CPA. It's highly reliant on how you are doing your investing, where you are doing your investing, and where you are holding your assets. So unfortunately, there's not a one size fits all answer here. We would recommend that you work closely with your CPA to see what might be relevant in your specific situation. Thanks, Anand. Really good question there. Okay, next question comes from Crystal. Crystal asks, so let's say the plan is set up by December 31st and we have until tax day 2021 to make our contributions for tax year 2020. Can we also go ahead and make contributions for the tax year 21 as well? Maybe let's say a month later. Um, yes, you can. You can make contributions to your 401k plan um, for that tax year at any time up until the IRS deadline. For 2020, you can make contributions to a 401k until tax day, including extensions. Um, this is based on the employer's tax return. So for you, Crystal, if you are a sole proprietor or a single member LLC disregarded entity, that means you have until April 15th or if you file extensions October 15th to make your contributions. Crystal, if instead you have an entity, an S Corp, a multi-member LLC, a partnership, a C Corp, then you need, uh, you have until March 15th or September 15th, including extensions to make your contributions. So that's for 2020. Now let's say it's January or February of 2021, you can definitely make your contributions for 2021 at that time. So long as your compensation for the, uh, from the business to you will support that contribution. You don't wanna over contribute. So don't be too gung ho to contribute everything all at once, unless you're quite certain that your compensation and profits from the business will substantiate that contribution. But yes, you can make those contributions um, early in the year if you prefer, totally fine. Next question from Crystal. For the CARES Act, being able to borrow up to 100,000, is that more so for individuals whose plans have already been set up? Yes, that is for people who already have uh, their 401k or if you're taking um, a distribution from your IRA, then you would need to have that plan established. Now I want to 
bring up something from the IRS here. I'm going to share my screen in just a moment, but I need to get the right link. So give me one moment. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen here for a moment. I want to share with you the verbiage about the CARES Act. There's two ways that you can get money out of your plan for the CARES Act. One is a distribution. The other is a loan. For a distribution, you can take out up to $100,000, and then you have two options. You can put the money back within three years and avoid taxes, or if you plan to take the distribution and you are not putting the money back, you have to pay taxes on that distribution over a three-year period. So the first decision to make is, is this a loan from my retirement plan or am I taking a distribution from the retirement plan? Because the rules are different. If you're taking a loan, then you, um, first of all, this is why I wanted to bring up the IRS here. So for plan loans made from March 27th through September 27th, 22nd, the limit will be increased up to $100,000. Today is December 24th. That means we are past the extended loan provision deadline from the IRS. If you are taking a loan from your 401k now, it is the normal IRS limits. That's 50% of your account value up to $50,000 maximum. So Crystal, for you, if you're specifically asking about the $100,000, that loan is no longer available. The IRS uh, ended the extended loan provisions on September 22nd. So if you need the 100,000, it's probably going to be treated as a distribution. Now, if you do that distribution, that's when you have those two options. You can either leave the money out, not pay it back, and then pay the taxes on that distribution over three years, or you can take the distribution and put the money back within a three-year time period. But you have to have the money in the plan before you can take out the funds. So Crystal, if your account is already set up with us, already funded, then by all means, you can definitely do the CARES Act distribution. Um, and actually, if we go to our knowledge base here on our website, click on support, go to our knowledge base. And if I type in CARES Act, you'll see we have these... Um, coronavirus related distributions right here. We have the information right here going over exactly the um, parameters of these distributions, including our coronavirus distribution self-certification form. So if you're going to take the distribution, Crystal, then you wanna complete this form. Now, one thing I wanna bring to your attention is we, we think there may is, there may be a chance that the IRS extends the CARES Act, but that hasn't been released yet. And right now, you have until December 31st to do your distribution. So you have to take that distribution before December 31st for it to count as part of the CARES Act, at least until we receive updated guidance from the IRS. I hope that helps, Crystal. Uh, really good questions here. And um, our next question, uh, we don't have a name on this one. The next question is, how can I direct the money from my work 401k to go to my solo 401k? I work and I also have my own business. I don't want to put my work money into that wasted 401k. I want to put all of my work money into the self-directed 401k. This is a great question. Um, so remember, there's two ways to get money into a retirement plan. There's rollovers from other retirement plans, and there's contributions that are calculated from your business earnings. Now, in this instance, uh, for your question here, contributions come from business earnings from the business connected to the plan. So if you work somewhere else and um, you're you know, making money, you can't take those earnings from a different employer and put them in your solo 401k. They're two different employers, two different 401ks. 
contributions can only be made from earnings to the retirement plan connected to that business. So you have a couple of options here. Um, if your current workplace 401k allows you to roll over money while you still work there, then you can take those contributions that are going into your workplace 401k and roll over those funds to the solo 401k. That's one way to get funds in. Another way to get funds into your solo 401k is to calculate the money that you're earning from your small business and then put those contributions into your solo 401k. And I'll put into the chat here a helpful link. So this goes to our contribution calculator. It's really simple to remember. It's just solo401k.com slash calculator. That link is right in the chat for you. So that's a great place to plug in your numbers and see what you are eligible to contribute to the solo 401k. Great question. Okay, next question comes from Rob. Rob says, so after speaking with my CPA, it looks I'll be maxing out my contribution to my Roth account. Um, I apologize if you're having to repeat yourself, but just to be clear, can I make that contribution any time before taxes are due? For example, April or October 2021 if I extend? And when do I when I do contribute at that time, it will count for my 2020 contribution. Great question, Rob. Um, and this is one we, we wanna make sure that you feel very comfortable with. According to the IRS, as long as your plan is established with us by December 31st, you have until tax day, including extensions to make contributions. And now that tax day is for the employer. So Rob, you said April or, um, you said April or October. So what that tells me is that your business is a sole proprietorship or a single member LLC, also known as a disregarded entity. The tax uh, filing deadline for a sole proprietorship or a single member LLC disregarded entity is April 15th with an extension deadline of October 15th. Rob, instead, if you own an entity for your business, a multi-member LLC, a partnership, an S-Corp, a C-Corp, your tax deadline, uh, filing deadline is March 15th, and your extension deadline is September 15th. And yes, you are correct. As long as you have the documents from us, you have until the tax filing date of the employer, including extensions to make your contribution. And I wanna show you where you can see this directly from the IRS, because sometimes I like to see it directly from the horse's mouth. So publication 560 from the IRS specifically discusses retirement plans for small businesses, SEP, simple and qualified plan. The solo 401k is a qualified plan. So what we'll do is we'll click on the PDF here so we can open up publication 560. Scroll to page three. This is where the good stuff is. This chart right here. Remember when I said the solo 401k is a qualified plan. So it's a qualified plan, defined contribution. You define how much you can contribute to a 401k. On this column here, it says when to set up the plan by the end of the tax year. So you're able to set up the plan from uh, with us by December 31st. And then this column here, last date for contribution, elective deferrals, that's your employee salary deferral contribution, due date of the employer's return, including extensions, employer contributions for profit sharing, due date of employer's return, including extensions. So Rob, for you, depending on your entity, you have until March or April, depending on the structure of your business, and September or October, if you file an extension. Work with your CPA to determine your filing deadlines plus extensions, and then yes, you have until that time to make your contributions, even your Roth contributions. Well, that's all of the pre-submitted questions that we have for today. We'll give you just a moment here to ask any live questions. Um, we are going to be off all right, Marie, 
I got you, Marie. So we are off tomorrow for Christmas. We will be back on Saturday for our daily Q&A calls. We'll be here Saturday, Sunday, and every day through the remainder of the year. Um, Marie, let's get to your question. Marie asks, I am mainly interested in after-tax non-Roth contributions and the conversion I can take advantage of with a solo 401k. Excellent, Marie. That's called the mega backdoor Roth. I would like to work with E-Trade. Anything I need to be aware of or what needs to be done now and down the road so that I am in compliance with the IRS. I want to do this correctly. Great question, Marie. The biggest thing that you can do is work with a competent accountant or CPA who can guide you through the process. The mega backdoor Roth conversion is a really exciting strategy. It gives you the ability to put a ton of money into your Roth 401k. But there are steps that must be followed. It's very important that you have your qualified financial professional looking over your shoulder, guiding you, making sure that you are following those steps correctly. We have a lot of trainings and guides. I'll link them for you here in the chat where we specifically walk through the mega backdoor Roth strategy. Use this as a starting point. And then when you're ready to implement, there you go, Marie, I just put that in the chat for you. Use this as a starting point to familiarize yourself with the strategy. And when you're ready to implement it for your specific situation, make sure that your CPA or accountant is guiding you and double checking that everything is being done properly. If you need a CPA who is literate with the solo 401k, you can find a list of um, accountants that are familiar with the solo 401k. They know how to do this structure and support you here. You can find that in our knowledge base at support.solo401k.com. Yeah, Marie, it's not uncommon. Your current uh, CPA has no idea how to work with self-directed 401ks. That's not uncommon. It is a bit of a niche type of a retirement account. So I would say that you should um, definitely check out our, C so I think we call it solo 401k literate CPA list, and you can find that in the knowledge base. Um, so what you need to be aware of is just following the proper procedures. Um, I'm not going to go too much into detail on that here. An overview is you make your voluntary after-tax contributions, and then you let them you know, sit in that bank or brokerage account for a couple of days. Then you move the funds from your after-tax bank account to your Roth bank account or brokerage account. Complete an in-plan Roth conversion form and your uh, accountant will complete a 1099-R. There are those, you know, some steps to follow there. So that's why we strongly recommend that you have your accountant guiding you through it. And, but it's a very cool strategy. So make sure you check out our solo 401k literate CPA list in the knowledge base, Marie. Now, I do want to touch base when you're talking about wanting to work with E-Trade. That's great. Um, we support all major brokerage firms, Schwab, Fidelity, E-Trade, Vanguard, TD Ameritrade, Interactive Brokers, et cetera. E-Trade right now is in the process of updating their guidelines, and they have been taking three to four weeks to open these brokerage accounts, and it's involved a lot of back and forth with the clients. We're trying to work with the E-Trade team to see what we can do to speed things up. Um, but just so you know, right now, E-Trade is in the middle of an overhaul of their onboarding process for these uh, non-custodial retirement accounts. And it seems like their entire team is needing to do some retraining because there has been a bit of a delay there. It's possible, um, but just do be aware of that, Marie. Um, but yeah, E-Trade otherwise is, is going to be fine. We hope that they're going to get their guidelines updated in January, and then it should be back to normal and getting those accounts open in, you know, five to 10 days. So great question, Marie. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Okay, we've got one more question here from Jorge. Jorge says, if you make an estimated contribution for 2021 and later in the year you realize you have to cut back, how does that work for a Roth IRA? Um, you know, Roth IRA contributions are after tax. So generally, you can just back out the contribution and you're allowed to withdraw your contribution. So generally, you can just back out those contributions. However, always work with your CPA, always work with your accountant and 
our recommendation would be to make sure you're running the numbers on what you're able to contribute so you don't accidentally over contribute. Over contribution is not fun. So, all right. Well, I think that that will do it for today. Have a very Merry Christmas, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Go have some Christmas cookies and eggnog and, and just have a wonderful rest of your day. We are off tomorrow and we will be back with our daily Q&A on Saturday. If you have any questions for us, you can post them in the chat here. We always look in the current session to bring questions in for the next one. And make sure you're posting your questions and comments in the Solo 401k network. You can find that at solo401k.net. Our experts are in the network every day, answering questions, making sure you have links to proper trainings. The other investors are in there as well. It's a wonderful place to meet other Solo 401k investors. And we look forward to seeing you on Saturday for the next December daily Q&A. Merry Christmas, and we'll see you.